I've been waiting for a long time to make this video. I was inspired by TD Cat Tech who did a similar video with different PMR radios. And the thing is about how loud are you getting through? How well is the modulation going with your PMR radio? A PMR radio is the European version of a FRS radio in the United States. It works on different bands. This is an example. That's the Motorola T82 Extreme. And all these radios have exactly the same output and exactly the same regulations they have to follow. It's half a watt and you cannot remove the antenna and that's it. You have 8 or 16 channels. The 8 channels is the legacy version, but early years 2000s, 8 more channels have been allowed and but are not available for every country. For instance, in Russia, it's still stuck to 8 channels. So what's the difference really in these radios? They have the same amount of power and they have the same amount of range. And no matter what you can see on the website pages that sell the radios or whatever is written on the box, it's always the same thing. You have the same power, nothing else. One thing that could make an actual difference is the size of the antenna. Because you cannot change the antenna. Part of the spec is PMR. You should not be able to remove it, so you cannot twist it, you cannot turn it. It's not removable. But someone, some, some of these have a better antenna than the others, depending on the model that you choose. And if you put them like this, you can see that the professional model is a slightly longer antenna. Now, keep in mind, the antenna inside is a simple coil and it doesn't always go all the way to the top. But if you compare that with, let's say, the Midland G9 Pro antenna, you could see that there is a major difference. And I doubt half of it is empty. There should be something in there. So in range, that makes a slight difference. But what happens when you're almost out of range or you're going a bit further and you start getting noise you start getting fm noise you know when your radio is not entirely in tune and then you still try to hear what your other person is telling you and at some point the noise is so high that you can't hear the person anymore and that ladies and gentlemen is why i made this video the modulation power is very often very different depending on the radio and usually you get what you pay for with the brands compared to the Chinese radios. Now let me go over all the radios that I recorded all the same way. So I started with this Motorola XT460. In the video, uh, in the recording, sorry, I say xd 420 which is actually this one it's exactly the same radio but without the display so it's it's the same thing the same electronics same modulation then i go over to a very popular radio on amazon the t82 extreme from motorola which you can find very often in several packages then i tested this cheap chinese retivis business-like radio this one is completely waterproof and it has a very la long antenna that's one of the reasons i bought it at the time having the better antenna matters and this is a similar radio a quite well uh, sized antenna this one was capable of doing digital as well as analog and i also showed you the midland that's the next one you will going to be hearing uh, I bought this one especially for this video. I've seen this one coming up on Amazon when I was browsing all the time and I have been wanting to buy it but not really needing it because I have a collection already. But in the end I said, well, what the heck, let's do it and make a video for it. And then, just for the matter of comparison, I took also two uh, other radios that are not license-free, not PMR, just to have an idea on how it works with professional uh, grade radios, radios that are actually sold for professional use and that are not uh, free of license. So PMR is part of the description, part of the, the section where PMR belongs to. It comes with a license that's free if you respect the rules, you don't change the antenna, you don't mess around with the radio, you leave it as it is, then you have a license for free. 
if you have a radio like this, this is a high tira, it's a business brand, and that's a very small one, but it also is programmed on PMR for testing purposes. And finally, I will be using a ham radio uh, portable transceiver, which will be the Yezu FT65. And that will be for comparison on how these ones sound like. Now, a side note on the Hytera. I did program that one. I have a ham license, so I am licensed to use this. And I did program it to have the best modulation possible. So it's not an out of the box situation, but these professional radios are usually programmed and that's what happens. So let's see how it sounds like. And let's look at the graphs. So here you see, we have the different graphs from the different recordings of these radios. I will be playing them, but you can see there is a major difference in volume. Keep in mind, I recorded this with the same receiver. It has been a scanner with the same levels all the way. I used a field recorder without changing any settings. So all these volume differences you will hear is what you really get when you have a standard radio receiving and your friends are using any of these radios that you see on the screen for transmitting. And this is how you would be hearing them if they're just standing very close to you, no noise, no nothing. So you can clearly hear what's being said. So let's start from the beginning. Each soundtrack says what radio it is. I will be showing them in front of me uh, each time that it comes up as well. I will be trying to follow fast enough. So there you have it. This is how these radios sound on the receiving end. And I don't have to tell you that if you have this radio, which is this track, that when you have a bit of a distance between you and your companion and the noise starts to kick in, that he will not understand you very well. Um, there is a possibility to put an external microphone on that. And when you put the microphone very close to your mouth, it, it works better, way better. But this is just an out of the box, standard way of holding your microphone uh, in front of your face, just like this, five centimeters, which is about the way you would usually use it. So to be a fair out of the box comparison. Um, so that's, that's the bad one. Uh, I was quite surprised that the RT40 has a slightly better modulation. Now, again, uh, I did program it because it's a digital one, can be programmed, and I pushed the microphone sensitivity in the software to the limit. So that's the maximum that these can get. The same happened with this one. Um, and then the other ones are just out of the box stuff. A small remark on the Motorola business one. That's very, very loud. Uh, you can change the microphone uh, volume settings in here. This is the standard setting, which is there's three settings going from one, two, and three. This is level two. It's the medium, which is supposed to be used for general use. Like there is no noise, uh, no excessive noise, but you're not in a silent room. So it just takes your voice as good as it can. If you have a noisy environment, they recommend to put it on number one, which is a lower level. And if you're in a completely silent room with nothing that makes noise around, you can push it even further to number three. So that, that's about it. But that's, that's the only one that makes a difference. All the other ones are more or less the same. So here you have it. Um, that way you can make your decision. Uh, I was pretty well surprised that 
the of course the expensive one works very well but still uh the other motorola that's uh about usually 90 200 euros for a pair is very well as well and the uh, midland which was this one if i'm right yes the midland um i was not really disappointed when you hear it from another radio the volume level seems okay uh it, it's it's very understandable it's it's not faint it doesn't sound faint at all like the retivist radios uh but in the end when you look at the charts i mean the graph doesn't lie uh when you will be in a distance situation the motorola will win but it's 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 a good one i mean it has a lot of interesting features it's it's really made for uh, people who are into mountaineering and hunting and so on with emergency channels dual watch and so on so it has interesting features and uh that's about it so i last note the high tira there is a PMA version of this so you could buy this Hytera PD365, I think it's LF at that case, uh, that does purely PMR, but I have no idea how it can be programmed or not in that case, if the software allows to boost the microphone gain or whatever, but it's possible to have a PMR version of that one. And then I had a last remark, there is one feature that Motorola does that I've seen nowhere else with their uh, T extreme and t80 82 92 all these radios have one very interesting thing when you scan for channels it will automatically detect the sub channel or the ctcss code that's being used by the sending party so when it's receiving and it will automatically adapt to that and when you transmit it uses that same ctcss code so that's interesting if you want to just listen around to anyone and be able to jump in and talk with them and make sure that they can hear you. I've seen that with no other radio so far. I've been looking several, looking up several radios. I hoped the Midland was able to do it, but it's not. So there you go. I hope this was helpful. Uh, thank you very much for watching and see you at the next time.